Good evening and welcome back to the Creating Awareness for Christ channel. Calvina Banner here with you as always. Now last week I started a, a session called Love in Action Part 1 and I had promised that this week I would finish or actually deliver Part 2 at least of Love in Action. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I felt led to go in a different direction, but I do promise you that we will go back to Love in Action to actually dig through those and unpack those points that I promised. But tonight, in light of New Year's, January 1st, 2016, right around the corner, I felt led in a different direction and I wanted to, to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit in what to teach about tonight. So Friday is January 1st, 2016. And this is about the time that we all begin to think about that infamous term, that infamous infamous phrase, New Year's resolutions, right? Um, you see it all the time now, even in social media, um, you know, this year I'm going to, you know, lose more weight or this year I promise to eat better. Um, this year I'm going to save more money. Um, and then my favorite one that I see out there is this year is going to be my year, 2016. I'm going to be happy. It's all about me. And da 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 da. That's my favorite one that I see out there a lot, right? But, 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 let me just say this. Um, those things are good. You know, those are good things to, to resolve that you will do better in, in the upcoming year. You know, eating better is always great for us. Losing weight if we need to. Awesome. Saving more money. Never anything wrong with that. And being happy in 2016, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing, right? So in and of itself, those things are not bad or wrong. But I want to challenge us to think a little more beyond the 2016 point. And that's why this message is titled New Life's Resolution. Because personally, I don't really dig resolutions because, you know, we come up with them in week one and then by the time week three of January comes, it done went on out the door just that fast. Um, and that's just habit. That's just human nature because we're human and we, um, you know, we're operating in flesh and things like that. So we get off track, we get distracted, we try to do things and propel things within our own strength. Does not always work, as I have found out in the past when I used to um, come up with New Year's resolutions. So again, wanting to challenge us to think beyond the 2016 point, because we have, you know, God willing, of course, we have more years beyond 2016. And I want us to think about eternal commitments, eternal commitments. You know, our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. What about that commitment? What are we committing to do in this spiritual area of our lives? Yeah, it's nice, again, to focus on the physical things that, you know, I named in the beginning. But what about our spirit, man? And what are we going to do differently in 2016 and beyond in order to commit to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Now, I want to go back to the, the my favorite New Year's resolution that I see out there is about being happy in 2016 and whatnot. And I believe a lot of people put that out there, you know, that I'm going to be happy. And, and, you know, you see this from year to year to year with, you know, certain people and whatnot. And it, like I said, it's nothing wrong with that. You want to you, you do want to commit to being happy. But I believe that there is a root cause of why we, we you know, we're so struck and so des um, desirable or desiring to be happy. You know, I believe deep down inside that there is something missing. There's a spiritual void there that needs to be filled that no external circumstance will fill. And I think during this time of year, we are disillusioned to believe that if I change this, if I change that by way of external things, I'm going to be happy. But Jesus is calling us to something different, calling us up higher, calling us um for to a new revelation and a new level in him so that we can truly have joy as opposed to being happy because happiness 
is dependent upon if X, Y, Z is coming together. Joy is something etern internal, eternal from Jesus himself, that no matter what the external circumstances are, we still have joy. Why? Because we have him. Amen. So I want to go to a passage of scripture that the Lord led me to by way of um, teaching this lesson about new life's reg resolutions. And it's from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 29. And it reads, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Mm, I love that. I love that, especially in contrast to the whole I want to be happy in 2016. Jesus is calling us to come, come to him. All of us who are weary and burdened, we got, we got burdens on us. We're weary, meaning we're tired. We're tired of the same old thing. We're tired of what went down in 2015. We don't want that going down again in 2016 and beyond, right? So Jesus is calling us to come if we're tired and if we're burdened down. And guess what else he said? He said, if you come to me, I will give you rest. And there is nothing like the rest of Jesus when everything is swirling around you like a tornado, you can be in the eye of that tornado and just looking up like, wow, there's nothing there. You know, or the eye of the hurricane. There's not, you can just mm, see clearly as you look to the hills from where your help comes from. Amen. So he said he will give us rest. Jesus also says in the scripture, Verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. So take my yoke upon me. In uh, farmers, with farmers, they usually have oxen and they yoke them together. It's a contraption that goes around the necks of two oxen so that they can work. The idea is to work in unison together and doing the work in the field. If one oxen goes one way, the other one typically needs to follow or one of them or both of them are going to ex, uh, experience some extreme pain because of the yoke around their neck. Now, if you can liken that illustration to what Jesus is saying here in verse 29, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And then if you skip down to verse 30, it says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So in this instance, Jesus is telling us that his yoke is easy. So we can picture us, picture ourselves yoked to Jesus learning from him. And as I alluded to with the oxen, if Jesus goes this way, we're going to go this way. If he goes that way, we're going to follow him and go that way. That way his yoke is easy. And he tells us here to learn from him. Amen. So think of that one-on-one -on -one time that pairing up you and Jesus to where you have the time, the opportunity to learn from him and take upon his yoke because it's easy. And he also says that his burdens is light. He is bidding us to come to him so that we can have relief from these pressures of daily life, um, things that are going on around us, things that kept us unhappy in years past. Amen. We want to propel ourselves into 2016 with great spiritual commitment, not just focusing on the physical and focusing on the things on the outside, but our spiritual being, because only what we do for Christ is going to last. Amen. All these spiritual things, losing weight, saving money, all that, it's not going to end up <laughs> in the end. Amen. So we must focus on the things of the spirit. Amen. So take his yoke, his come unto me and I will give you rest. So I challenge all of us for this year's for this year and years to come to make a commitment to Jesus. Yes, make a commitment to Jesus. These new year's resolutions that we make, those things are going to come and go just like the wind in and out before you even know it, but the commitment to Jesus is what is necessary. He is calling for us to come unto him. So, um, what I want to do now is kind I, I really want to invite those who are not currently followers of Christ. Amen. 
if you've been listening to my videos or, you know, anybody's, uh, you know, church sermons and things like that, and you feel so led and you feel the desire, the need to want to make a commitment to Jesus today, now is your time to do just that. Amen. God loves us so much. He loves you so much. And he, his scripture even says that in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And God wants you to have that everlasting life today. Amen. So if you so desire to receive the gift of salvation, first of all, you must admit that you are a sinner. Amen. Admit that you've done wrong. Ask the Lord for forgiveness for these sins. Also, understanding that as a sinner that you know that you deserve the penalty of sin, which is death, understanding that. But most and foremost, confessing that Jesus Christ died on the cross to save you from sin and death and that he rose again. Amen. Confess that and believe that in your heart. Amen. Romans uh, 10 and 9 uh, through 10 tells us that all you have to do is just believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. It is just that simple. Amen. And then you want to just speak out a commitment to Jesus. Speak, speak out a commitment to God. I commit my life to you. Help me to do the right things. Help me to live for you. Live through me, God. Live through me in the name of Jesus that you may get all the glory. Amen. And then just receive this gift through faith. You may not feel anything different now, but if you take those steps, you are saved. You are a follower of Christ. Amen. So God bless you if you decided to do just that. Amen. And for those who are in the faith, for those who are followers of Christ and those who Pray the simple prayer of salvation just moments ago. You too are now a follower of Christ. And, and, and what we challenge you to do now is just to dig in deeper in 2016 and beyond. Amen. Dig in deeper with Jesus. Okay. So you may have to rid yourself of some current relationships in order to get into a tighter relationship with the Lord. And that's all right. Because you want to be yoked with Jesus. That is all you need. Learn from him. And how do you learn from him? You read his word, personal uh, study time of his word and personal prayer time. Amen. You must seek his face diligently. He says that he is a rewarder for those of those who seek him, who diligently seek him. That's what he says in his word. Amen. So I challenge us to have our personal prayer time and our personal Bible study time. And if you're new to studying the word of God, you don't know where to start. You're not alone, but it's an easy thing to do. Think of some areas in your life where you may need work on yourself. Um, let's say you struggle with unforgiveness or you struggle with um, patience. You struggle with, uh, what else? Anger. There's so many things. If you have a, um, a hard copy of the Bible, you can easily flip to the concordance in your Bible and look up the topics uh, on anger unforgiveness, um, patience, and you'll find a load of scriptures under those different topics. And you can look up the scriptures that are pertinent to that topic. Amen. And start there. Meditate on those scriptures. Meditate on the word of God. Hide the word in your heart that you may not sin against God. So that's where you can begin. And as you begin to continue to meditate and sup on the word of God. He will lead you to things that he wants to reveal to you in your life through his word, but you got to get started. Amen. So if you have any further questions, want more information, um, especially for those who um, just accepted Jesus Christ as their savior tonight, please, you can visit my website at www.creatingawareness.com for the number four, Christ.org. All right, so you spell out creating, spell out awareness, the number four, and spell out Christ.org. 
um, submit some you know questions or anything that you may have for me, and I'll be more than willing to answer you. Um, but God bless you. 2016 is going to be great for you. 2016 is going to be great for me. And not just 2016. We are talking about beyond 2016. Amen. For the kingdom of God, for the glory of God, we are overcomers. We are victorious in Jesus. So don't just limit yourself to 2016. Amen. We are kingdom builders forever.